we're going to talk about the history of New Zealand's fishing industry. And here's a fish and chips dinner. If you've ever had fish and chips, uh, you've been part of the history of the New Zealand fishery. And people have been having this a version of this dinner for the last eight or nine hundred years in New Zealand. So let's uh, have a look at how it all got started. Well, first off, we have to have people to have a fishery. And Maori arrived, and there was an untouched wilderness. So no fishing industry whatsoever. And they arrived, and the population grew, multiple canoes. And uh, as the population grew, people started to um, uh, claim territories. These rohe were established, and those, those included fishing grounds. And fisheries management, Aotearoa, was born. So what, what sort of impact did uh, Maori have when they arrived? Uh, one was the Maori dog. They brought the, uh, the Maori dog. Now we're not just talking about uh, marine and fisheries populations. We're talking about the entire population or the entire uh, ecology of New Zealand. And with them, the Maori dog was a, um, a predator, as you know, and would have uh, been out in the woods hunting as well as humans. The kuri um, definitely had an impact on, um, on species, especially things like flightless birds. Polynesian rat, same thing. So roughly 20 species of birds, several wetas, unknown number of frogs, lizards of the forest floor, all were driven to extinction. Uh, the forest cover dropped from 85% to 50%, so 35% of the um, of the uh, the island that was covered was no longer covered with uh, Maori populations. Uh, this is for uh, hunting moa and other uh, things, where uh, and also for growing crops. So when we uh, grow crops on land, obviously we um, have to cut down a native um, uh, ecology in order to, we have to change the native ecology in order to have that room to grow those crops. And snapper were actually uh, um, eliminated from certain areas, possibly, by Mary um, around uh, 400 years, uh, around between 600 and 400 years ago. Here's a nice uh, snapshot of um, where the forests of the forest cover decrease. So again, we're sort of talking about uh, terrestrial uh, changes, but all of this area was um, burned by the moa hunters, generally burned away. So how do we know all this anyway? Uh, well, we can tell from middens. Middens are essentially trash pits. If you're a pre um, colonial Maori, and you're having a dinner of pippies and you finish it up, you've got um, the rubbish that you are gonna that you don't want to leave laying around the campsites, which is all the pippy shells. So you throw them in your kitte bag and you take them over to the dump and dump them in. So by sorting through all this stuff, by rummish, rum, rummaging through the, the old rubbish dumps, which are mittens, we can tell what people were eating and we can look back through time uh, by dating know how old that midden is and what people were using and throwing away and so if you look at uh, old archaeological sites from uh, like the Wairo Bar in Marlboro uh, there were all sorts of um, large animals generally the uh, over to two or three kilo kilo animals so you got all the different moa species geese and swans adz bills takahi shags big penguins New Zealand sea lions, fur seals, all the real big stuff that were that was around quite commonly. But later, uh, if you look in after the 14th century or so, the larger vertebrates that are that are absent or um, are really uncommon anyway, and so they start to shift from these larger vertebrates to dependence on shellfish, fish, eels, plants, and um, even in some of these, you can see that there was local depletion where the shellfish size got smaller as the, lo the, local, the larger ones became locally depleted. Uh, 
Um, one thing that we know from middens is elephant seals disappeared um, from the North Island by about 400 years ago, but they were, they used to be all over the um, New Zealand, the whole of New Zealand, North and South Islands. Every once in a while they'll show up on shore and um, waddle around, uh, um, making, making uh, their presence known these days even, but uh, they used to be widespread. Uh, hooker sea lions also disappeared from the uh, North Island by about 400 years ago and the South Island uh, by about uh, 300 years ago, I think 280. So uh, now they're at refuge um, populations down in the, in the Antarctic Islands. Uh, elephant seals and hooker sea lions. Uh, oh, here we go. These have gone from Main Island by 1500, gone from Stewart Island by 1800. Uh, so 14 to 123 hooker sea lions are still killed in the, each year in the, the squid fishery. as New Zealand fur seals is another species that were impacted. So there were about 1-2 million before colonization by, your, uh, by Maori. Gone from the North Island by 1500, so 500 years ago, not, uh, not 400. And uh, then Europeans arrived and started um, just slaughtering these things because uh, there was a big market for their furs in uh, Europe and so uh, they were um, nearly wiped out in the South Island but protected by law in 1815 and now they are coming back because uh, after they um, uh, stopped being hunted then um, North Island or the uh, then they they started repopulating in the North Island is now uh, and now has quite a, quite a lot of uh, fur seals. You can see them at Plain Island or um, Mayor Island or even Motiti uh, year round. So about 1,200 killed in fishing operations every year now. Uh, so you can do something about that. You can use these um, sea lion exclusion devices and turtle exclusion devices, and here's a turtle actually coming out of one. So you have this cage here, uh, well it's not a cage, but it's bars, uh, and, the, and within the, the trawl net, and the fish will go through these bars, whereas the turtle, if it's big enough, will catch on the bars and then go sliding out through this little flap in the net, and hopefully be released un unharmed. So this has been a big development in shrimp fisheries and hopefully is uh, saving a lot of turtles that uh, were, would otherwise be caught in that fishery. Uh, whaling in New Zealand is a big part of the early um, fishery. So un virtually untouched populations in the late 1800s. And sperm whales were one of the main species caught uh, southern right whales, so these were the right whale because they were, they're called the right whales because they were the right whale to hunt because they were very easy, they are placid, they floated once you uh, harpooned them so they weren't hard to drag up and uh, they were virtually wiped out in 15 years. Um, there are probably a few more than, uh, there are probably six or seven hundred of them now, their population is growing and they're occasionally seen around even uh, like Ledger Island and Rabbit Island. Uh, every once in a while, every couple of years, there'll be one float hanging around with a calf. Humpback whales uh, were the uh, go-to species after the sperm and right whales were um, eliminated or uh, commercially eliminated. So, so these ones uh, migrate past New Zealand every year from the Antarctic up to the tropics where they, where they give and varieties whales or brooders whales. Um, these ones are quite common even uh, in the uh, in the Haraki Gulf now, but um, used to be much much more common feeding on krill and the and the um, schools of fish that are uh, 
abundant in the spring around uh, this area of New Zealand. Pilot whales even. So once they started getting, the, once all the big whales were gone, the, um, the even these little uh, smaller whales were started to be hunting. And, uh, these things are more like dolphins, so they're a little harder to row after with a boat, and uh, but they uh, were more caught after the advent of, uh, of motorized vessels. So early on, whaling brought lots and lots of people to New Zealand. It was one of the main drivers for settlement, and so about 220,000 whales killed in New Zealand waters from. 1822 to 1831. That's only a period of nine years. So we really intensively fished it. 30,000 whales after that um, from 1830s to 1860s. And so here's a nice quote about how uh, New Zealand was for these whalers as a, as a stopover. The hell hole of the Pacific. Uh, prostitution, grog shops, and drunken brawls were common. So you can imagine like that uh, a good portion of New Zealand was um, married, controlled, and uh, living, people were living like they, they had for a long time, and then there were these uh, horrible, scurvy little outposts of uh, American sailors and European sailors coming to um, try to make their fortune. So what we're going to be doing for the rest of the, uh, uh, the, the historical lecture is we're going to go through the major historical developments from 1840 to the present day. So with the whaling, that whaling pretty much was regulated by the fact that we caught most of them and we killed most of them. So there weren't as many left and that's when the, the fishery declined. But we'll look at the uh, developments from when there was essentially no management besides um, uh, Maori territory to uh, early colonial phase, then the industrial phase. So these follow along with um, greater population and technology increases. Coastal development phase, the government intervention phase, the, de the development phase, the early exclusive economic zone, and then finally the inshore fishery from the quota management um, uh, when the quota management system was uh, just established and the deep water fishery was developed with things like orange roughy. Okay, see you next video.